Hi, welcome to this MicroGem webinar. Today, we will discuss the often rate-limiting step in molecular testing, isolating nucleic acids. At MicroGem, we have reinvented nucleic acid extraction. We replaced traditional extraction methods with a simple single-tube approach. Our unique cocktails of thermophilic and mesophilic enzymes and buffers systematically lyse cells, destroy nucleases, digest proteins, and release nucleic acids, all within minutes, not hours, and at an affordable cost. We will show you how to simplify your sample preparation workflows while producing high-quality DNA and RNA with good yields, less chance of error, and less chance of cross-contamination. To achieve all of this, we've cut through the dogma and gone to extremes, literally. Oh, and if you're wondering about our name, micro refers to our expertise in advanced microfluidics that will enable us to carry out molecular assays anywhere. And the GEM stands for Genes, Enzymes, and Microbes, truly the heart of our sample preparation and nucleic acid extraction capabilities. Microgym began life in the 1980s as Pacific Enzymes Limited. Our strategy was to discover new organisms and enzymes in extreme environments for industrial applications. New Zealand was an obvious place to do this work. Its geysers, hot pools, and volcanoes were a ready source of new, extremely thermophilic bacteria and archaea. New Zealand also has good access to Antarctica, the coldest, driest, windiest place on Earth. From the huts and artifacts of the great Antarctic explorers like Scott and Shackleton and Amundsen, the team accumulated a wealth of cultures and knowledge. From the extraordinary McMurdo Dry Valleys, to the boxes of food and supplies in Scott and Shackleton's huts, 110-year-old carcasses in the meat locker, and a mummified seal on the floor, all unique culture mediums for extraordinary microorganisms that have had over a century to grow. These expeditions of discovery provided an expansive, curated culture collection of fungi, bacteria, and archaea, organisms found from minus 10 degrees Celsius to plus 95 degrees Celsius, as well as environmental samples ready for metagenomic sequencing. Today's company is run by an executive team with over 175 years of experience in business, plant sciences, microfluidics, instrumentation, and molecular genetics. Our company is spread across the globe with a head office in the UK, microfluidics and engineering in the USA, manufacture in China, and biology in New Zealand. So how is Microgym different from other life sciences providers? Microgem extraction kits and instruments use cocktails of enzymes that work at different temperatures. This means that we can create a sequence of coordinated reactions by simply changing the temperature. And that, of course, is easily done using a thermal cycler, something we all have in the lab. You don't need expensive robots and instruments, just the biochemistry that comes in the Microgem kits. Using this innovative approach, we've been able to cut through the dogma. We've thrown away the recipe books for molecular biology that we've slavishly followed for 25 years. The dogma around how we do things in the lab is ingrained in all of us, and so we use complex methods for no other reason than we have always used complex methods. Even when companies introduce sophisticated automation, the same old chemistries are inside, making the instruments large, complex, and expensive. It sounds a little unfair to suggest that brilliant scientific minds stick to rigid rules, but handling DNA is tricky, and you often can't even see your sample. So if you have a method that works, why change it? The reason for change is obvious if you think about it. When you are doing one or two extractions a month, a little inefficiency doesn't matter. But when you're doing hundreds or even thousands of samples, time and money matter. Microgym has reinvented the biochemistry. We have removed hurdles that we have doggedly lived with for 25 years. Let's for a moment look at the current ways we extract nucleic acids. Whether you're using beads or columns, almost all methods start with proteinase K. Now, a good side to proteinase K is that it works in strong solutions of ionic detergents like SDS. 
The bad side is that it actually needs those detergents to make it effective. And once you have put SDS in your lysate, you've created a whole lot of problems for yourself. You have to get it out. The protonase K is okay. You can kill it by simply heating your tube to 65 degrees Celsius. But the SDS has to be removed. Otherwise, it will inhibit every downstream reaction you choose to do, whether that's PCR, QPCR, WGS, or STRs. The easiest way to demonstrate what this limitation does to your workflow is with the older solvent extraction method. You follow the proteinase K step with a phenol extraction. This is to remove the protein and the SDS. You've now successfully gotten rid of the SDS, but you've put phenol in your extract, which is as bad as SDS. So you first extract with a 50-50 mix of phenol and chloroform to help things along, and then follow it with a chloroform extraction. The phenol is now gone, but now you've got chloroform in there, and that is worse than phenol. So you add sodium acetate and precipitate with alcohol. That gets rid of the chloroform, but now you have acetate in your DNA. So you rinse it with 80% ethanol, which gets rid of the acetate, but now you have ethanol in your DNA, so you have to dry it down. If you look at every step in the method, each is to remove something you put in there in the previous step. The steps have nothing to do with the starting sample. Now, you may think that columns and beads are better, but they're still doing just the same, going through a series of bindings and washes and elutions, all tedious and prone to mistakes and all causing yield loss. Why? Because you put detergent in your extract. You may ask, what about the other components you're getting rid of? Well, the main ones are debris, which you can spin out if it's a nuisance, and hydrolyzed protein, something you will probably add to your subsequent reactions in the form of BSA. So why are you so anxious to get rid of it? So what can we do to improve things? Proteinase K is rapidly inactivated above 55 degrees Celsius. Despite what some methods tell you, it's stone cold dead at 65. The problem is that protein is much more easily hydrolyzed when it's denatured. That's what the SDS does. But heat works just as well, and so Microgym found a thermophilic proteinase that works optimally at 75 degrees. Now you have your denaturing conditions without a detergent. At Microgym, we went through our culture collection and tested a large panel of enzymes. We had a wish list. We wanted a proteinase that was thermophilic and optimally active at around 75 degrees. But it shouldn't be too stable because we needed to kill it by raising the temperature a little more. It should also have a broad specificity and importantly work in buffers compatible with PCR and other downstream reactions. After screening our collection, we found a proteinase in a bacterium found in a hydrothermal vent high on the slopes of Mount Erebus in Antarctica, an active volcano with a liquid lava lake in its crater. We named the bacterium EA1, Erebus Antarctica Isolate 1. So now we had a proteinase that could do everything that proteinase K could do, but without a detergent and in simple buffers compatible with PCR. We could lyse the cells, digest the proteins, and use the DNA directly without bothering with all the purification steps. It could all be accomplished in a single tube. A second advantage to using EA1 proteinase is that normally it's impossible to mix other enzymes with proteinases. For example, how do you mix lysozyme with proteinase K without the proteinase destroying it? The answer is, you can't. There are plenty of published methods that try to mix the two, but when our team followed the progress of the reaction, we found the lysozyme was destroyed in the first few seconds, so it served no purpose. But that's not the case with our enzyme. EA1 is inactive below 45 degrees. It's effectively deep frozen. So you can put the two enzymes together in the pot, incubate at 37 degrees, and let the lysozyme do its work. Once the lysozyme has done its job, you raise the temperature to 75 degrees Celsius, the EA1 becomes active, ruptures the cells, removes the nucleosomes, kills any nucleases present, including tough RNases like RNase A, and removes the lysozyme. It needs to be removed because lysozyme is very inhibitory to TAC DNA polymerase. A last raise to 95 degrees and the EA1 self-digests so it can no longer harm the TAC. 
So how does this help? Well, the obvious advantages are reducing time and effort, which reduces costs. Removing complexity reduces error rates and yield loss. You can also use this strategy when it's impossible to carry out multi-step extractions, as is the case with single-cell work, sub-microliter PCR, and digital PCR. You can't easily add new reagents once your reaction has started. With the microgym method, all you do is add the reagents to a single tube and heat step your reaction through the stages. There is, of course, a little more to our products than just EA1 proteinase. For 15 years, we have worked on proprietary formulations and strategies. Our two families of kits are Prep Gym for the life sciences and Forensic Gym for forensic biology. These kits come with everything you need, enzymes, buffers and additives, and easy-to-follow instructions. We are also aware that scientists around the world are extracting DNA from a million and one different things. And for many, there are no off-the-shelf instructions. But please, if you're working on some strange creature that we've never tried before, send us an email and we'll help you get things going. And if we can't help you, we'll let you know. Microgym hasn't stopped at reagent kits. We took things a step further with the invention of the PDQX, which, as you've probably guessed, stands for Pretty Damned Quick Extraction. The PDQX adds to the biochemistry of temperature-controlled extraction by providing automated purification through a polymer column. This column sits at the bottom of a disposable cartridge. We still use temperature to control the reaction, so the PDQX is very simple. It has only one moving part, the fan, to cool the electronics. Hence, it's low cost and robust and can be powered by a transformer or a battery. The PDQX works by heating the extraction reagents in steps, either a single 75 degrees, or if there are other enzymes in the mixture, like lysozyme, it will use a lower temperature step first, just as we do with the reagent kits. After the 75 degree step, the temperature is ramped again. At 80 degrees, a heat burstable valve ruptures and the inner tube of the cartridge, which is made of thermoresponsive plastic, shrinks. The extract is squeezed through the purification column and into a collection tube. The polymer removes polyphenolic and carbohydrate inhibitors, and importantly, the EA1 proteinase. Because we don't need an EA1 heat kill step, the DNA does not reach above 80 degrees Celsius and so stays double-stranded. Furthermore, the purification step removes typical inhibitors from soil, stool, and plants. So the DNA is ideal for constructing libraries and next-generation sequencing. What's more, because there are no pipetting steps, the extracted DNA is minimally sheared, and so you get long read lengths with PacBio or MinION sequencing. The ease and speed of the PDQX are demonstrated with side-by-side -side comparisons of competing procedures. These are the recommended methods for extracting bacterial DNA for NGS using columns, magnetic beads, and microgem. There is no competition. And remember, fewer steps means fewer mistakes, less time, higher throughput, lower cost, greater yields, better read lengths, and less plastic waste. The million-dollar question is, does it work? These results show a few examples. The left is a human STR from a sperm stain extracted with the Forensic Gym sperm kit. The center image is a qPCR of the human BRCA1 gene extracted from a buccal swab using the Prep Gym Universal Kit. And on the right are comparative plots showing Illumina sequences of Myothermus ruber when DNA was extracted using the PDQX or Chiagen. With plant DNA, we can isolate PCR-ready DNA for PCR and qPCR in less than 15 minutes. Samples are collected in the field using our collection tool and storage cards, and punches from the cards go directly into the PDQX. There's no need for liquid nitrogen or grinding and no tedious purification steps. The method, known as Phytogen, has been validated on a wide range of plants, pathogens, and sample types for PCR and qPCR. At Microgym, we've been inspired to think differently about sample preparation and nucleic acid extraction. 
By tapping into nature's most extreme organisms and deriving enzymes, we have captured nature's power in a single tube. As a result, we offer a nearly effortless approach to extracting high-quality nucleic acid from a single cell or from thousands of cells, all in minutes, not hours, with no loss of DNA or RNA and at a reasonable cost. To get started, you can find which kit works best for your sample type at www.microgymbio.com slash products and purchase it online. We're looking forward to hearing from you as you implement this new approach to isolating nucleic acids.